What's up guys, welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. The shop is finally to the point where we can work on bikes. Let's do that. So before we get started on the KZ, I wanna give you guys one quick walkthrough of the shop now that it is uh, kind of fully set up. Uh, when I left it off last time, it was still kind of in shambles. Uh, but getting there. So over here is a couple of shelves with bends. Those are all my takeoff parts, old, uh, you know, carburetors, side covers, basically any like OE part, handlebars, stuff like that, that I took off of previous projects um, that I want to keep because we might use them for a future project. What I need to do is get through and organize all of those. I want to get rid of the black bends and put everything into clear bins, kind of organized by category, I guess, like, you know, all of the plastics in one and carb parts and um, that kind of stuff so that I can see what's in a uh, bin without having to open it. Over here is just another little table for storage, engine hoist, other jack stands, my two Dayton cabinets that I picked up from that estate sale. Uh, this one's just full of kind of random parts, some of my power tools, that kind of stuff. Uh, this one is all of my paints, fluids, tapes, oils, grease, um, you know, all the kind of um, consumables, we'll call them, are in there. Uh, a little bit further over is my hardware section. So this is where we have our drawers with all of our nuts and bolts and washers and all that kind of stuff uh, with the um, you know bolt checker and everything. So if I want to uh, one day go through everything and actually organize it all by size, I can do that. It also makes it really easy to kind of match up um, you know, hardware if I need to buy some or whatever. Um, a little bit further over is the long workbench that was in my old shop. Uh, this shelf here is going to be kind of whatever the current project on the lift is. Uh, we will be kind of putting parts on there as, you know, parts come in that we order, we can store them there. Anything I take off and need to store, just going to be easy to have it kind of right there. So I plan on kind of clearing that out and having it stay relatively clean. Uh, a little bit further over, mounted my TV uh, on the wall. That also doubles as the monitor for my shop computer. Uh, super convenient having this because I can just look up, uh, you know, parts. These are the shocks we have right here. Uh, wiring diagrams, you know, if I have a, a question about something, I could pull up a, you know, YouTube video or a forum post or whatever and kind of look into stuff. I can kind of keep an eye on the channel, how we're doing with subscribers, all that kind of stuff. I was watching an auction yesterday uh, some stuff that was coming up. So super convenient to have a nice big shop uh, monitor for the computer. Uh, then we have a bunch of motorcycle pictures I kind of hung up around for kind of inspiration of different bikes that I liked. Ultrasonic cleaner, additional parts. Back here is mostly motorcycle storage. Uh, we do have a bunch more stuff coming to go on the walls. Uh, obviously the lift in the middle here, uh, another new addition to the shop. I showed you guys the big drill press I got the other day. Uh, I also picked up a 20 gallon parts washer so that when we're doing carbs and other kind of greasy, dirty stuff, we can clean them nicely, um, you know, without having to kind of go out and just spray two cans of carb cleaner on everything. Uh, this is my other main workbench. Uh, I'm still kind of figuring out exactly how I want to set this up. I think this is going to work well. In that box are three more um, LED shop lights that are gonna go on this side to kind of brighten up this side of the room. Uh, last section is gonna be tubing bender. Still trying to figure out the final location for that. It's kind of a hard thing to place because it needs to be out in the open so that you can have you know big pipes in there and actually get it bent and everything. But if it's out in the open, it's gonna be right in the middle in the way a lot of the time. So I gotta figure out if I can kind of come up with some kind of mounting system that can move or just figure out the right angle where like most of the stuff I'm gonna be bending on it is like frame hoops and stuff that's, you know, maybe three feet long total. Um, so it can be relatively tucked up, but that's kind of to be determined still. If anybody has any ideas, let me know. Uh, finally, I built this kind of workbench countertop thing uh, yesterday. This is just a 98 inch, I think is what size, uh, countertop from Ikea, it was like 50 bucks. Uh, and then two by four frame underneath with a couple of shelves. So that's all of my um, kind of metal scraps and flat stock and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the idea is that this area is gonna become the kind of metal fab zone. I have my smaller uh, drill press over here, metal cutting saw and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm sure this area will kind of evolve over time. But that's the general idea. Last two things are the blast cabinet that is in process of becoming a vapor blasting cabinet and my big 80 gallon uh, air compressor that is uh, actually wired in now. So shop is coming along. What do you say we uh, get to work on a motorcycle? 
Cut the shocks off and you can kind of see the comparison side by side. So the stock shocks measure like kind of center to center, I'll call it 12 and 5 eighths, where these are 13 and a half. So just slightly less than an inch um, longer, but these do also offer uh, adjustable preload. Um, so we can preload the suspension um, and then also um, some compression. Um, I don't think they do rebound adjustment or they just do rebound and not compression. One of those, they're like single adjustable, not double adjustable. Um, so we'll kind of work on that once we ride the bike and we see how stiff they are and that kind of stuff. Try to set up the preload based on um, my weight or average rider weight. I'm gonna set it for like you know, 175, 180 pounds, something like that. Um, and then eventually when I get around to selling this bike, if uh, you know somebody wants to adjust it, we can do that. But should be uh, super quick to swap these back over. For the top, they pretty much just kind of slide right back in. Put the little lock washer on and the little acorn nut. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. For the bottom, they give you two uh, bushing options, I think a 10 and a 12 uh, millimeter bushing, and that's to go into the little kind of eyelet down here. So it's not just rubber um, in this little clamp. So basically, you're going to slide this little bushing into there. And what it's doing is just taking up this space in this clamp so that it's not just kind of squeezing down and smashing the rubber. You know, we wanna make sure that it stays and that the rubber is actually acting like an isolator. Um, so the idea here is you just pick which um, bushing works best for you, slide it in your little eyelet. I just spray a little WD-40 on there to get it to slide in and then slides right in and bolts right up. Rear shocks are on and the bike is lowered back down. So you can see it's got a nice level stance now. Hopefully you can see that from in here. So it was a perfect amount of lift on the back. So really happy with how that turned out. Um, next thing I wanna try and work on is cleaning up the electronics. So instead of building an entire electronics box, the Stock electronics are on this little metal tray that used to be kind of vertical on, on you know, the opposite side of the bike. And I mean, it, it seems to work really well. I mean, it's got all these like rubber isolators for the starter solenoid and for the fuse box and, you know, mount for the um, voltage regulator, modern voltage regulator rectifier we put on before. Um, so I'm thinking I want to keep that. So what I've kind of done is very temporarily basically flipped it around and mounted it kind of underneath where the seat's gonna go. So obviously the seat will be here and then this will be up as high as it'll go. And you can see, I mean, it really clears up the bike and we're gonna build like a rear fender kind of um, little piece right here. So it will protect um, the electronics from getting hit with like rocks and dirt and stuff while we're off road. And then it's super accessible. Should I need to access, you know, a fuse or something while I'm out riding the bike, I can literally go underneath and much like a stock motorcycle, get to things without having to remove stuff with tools. So I really like that. So I'm gonna try and figure out a more permanent solution, whether we wanna kind of utilize some of the holes that are already in this bracket, um, like I kind of temporarily have here, or if we're just going to like trim off some of this and we can weld on extensions. And basically I wanna try and utilize some of this factory mounting hardware if we can just because it's nice and strong it's already installed um, you know there's no reason to kind of reinvent the wheel on some of this stuff um, but whatever we don't use I want to kind of trim off and, and keep nice and clean so I'm gonna kind of mess around with this for a little bit see um, exactly how I want to mount that and I'll show you guys what I come up with uh, for the battery kind of a similar situation it's in this uh, factory battery box that has a nice rubber kind of hold down the clamp and everything what I'm thinking for the battery, and I know it's gonna be hard to see, and that's kind of the point, is I'm gonna tuck it in vertically, kind of right behind where this rear master cylinder is. So it's gonna be kind of in between the frame rails, kind of right here, center to the bike. Um, so it's gonna be nice and accessible again, should I say have to get to the battery for whatever reason. Um, but because of this being here, um, you know, it'll kind of disappear. This whole back section of the bike will still be nice and kind of uh, open. So the battery will be kind of available and accessible, but not bulky and kind of in the way. So I think that's going to be a pretty good plan overall. Um, again, I'm going to kind of continue working on that and I'll bring you guys back with uh, what I come up with. 
Okay, so here's what I got so far. I uh, had to cut off one of the little kind of mounted nuts on here um, to get it to fit where I want. Thinking right across here. So what I'm gonna need to do is just weld on about an inch of metal on kind of each side here. So kind of an inch off of here and an inch off of here. So I'm just gonna take this flat stock that I have, cut and, you know, I'll probably overlap maybe a half inch or so to get a nice strong weld and then it'll be stick out an inch on each side. And we'll punch a couple holes through it. I'm thinking since these are already threaded, we'll be able to kind of bolt, you know, through that piece and then thread into this piece and just kind of bolt it right up from underneath and it'll suck it up nice and tight. So got the bracket all done. Basically all I did was put the little pieces in there, hold this up, tack it, pull it out, finish weld it, and then hit it with a coat of black. So nothing too crazy. So uh, this is still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna give it uh, another couple of minutes to dry and then we will start to kind of put all the electronics back uh, onto here and then kind of bolt this thing up into place and get an idea how it looks. Got the uh, electronics kind of back onto the mount, mount tightened, bolt in place. It's nice and uh, sturdy, so we're gonna have no issues there whatsoever. Um, starter solenoids up here in the front, voltage regulator in the middle is gonna get nice airflow. Uh, the fuse thing kind of hangs down a little bit lower than I would like. When the bike's on the ground, I don't think you'll ever see it. Uh, I'm gonna try it this way. If it bugs me, uh, it would be pretty easy to just kind of put another mounting tab on this side and literally just bring it up and have it be right here in this little indention. Um, the only downside to that is I would lose the functionality to be able to access the fuses uh, unless I removed the seat. Um, with this bike going like, cause we are going to have that rear fender, I'm probably going to just hard mount the seat. Um, and what I mean by that is on my previous bikes that I've had this, uh, or similar seat, I mount, uh, wing nuts underneath so that I can get under there and unscrew and take off the seat if I need to, because all the electronics and the fuses are and everything are in this box under the seat. So I want to be able to access that kind of stuff should I need to if, you know, one blows when I'm out on a ride. So if I hard bolt, you know, just straight up bolt the seat to the bike, I won't be able to remove it without tools, uh, which means I wouldn't be able to access the fuse uh, box. So long-winded explanation of, I don't think you're ever gonna notice it, but it does hang down a little bit lower than everything else, so to be determined if we're going to, uh, to move it or not. Obviously, all the rest of this wiring is very temporarily in place. I will kind of finalize all the routing and zip tie it and everything and have it all nice and clean uh, in the future. Next thing I wanna jump on is figuring out how we can mount up the uh, battery. So I decided that despite putting some time into this bracketry, I think this battery is just too big. Um, I think it's really gonna take away from kind of the clean look I'm going for in the center of the bike. Um, so we're gonna get a smaller battery. What I don't know uh, at the moment is if my new uh, voltage regulator is compatible with lithium ion. If it is, we'll probably get like a anti-gravity eight cell and then build a small battery box uh, probably right here. Those things are only uh, two and a quarter inches thick. So if I build it right there um, It'll still be you know nice and clean and tucked out of the way. It'll never get in the way of the tire um, We could also build it um, You know somewhere even closer to over here, maybe uh, No, not quite there Could you maybe even go sideways under here? Anyway, there's going to be a lot more options of where we can kind of squeeze that um, so I just emailed uh, the people over at Coil Spec, which is where I bought the voltage regulator from, uh, because they don't list on the site of whether it's compatible with lithium ion, uh, which means most likely it probably isn't. Um, so then we have to decide, okay, do we want to just try and find this a smaller lead acid battery, or do we want to spend quite a bit more money and get like a Rick's um, new voltage regulator that is made for lithium ion? Uh, Long-winded explanation, but... Uh, Despite all of this, I decided it's gonna to be too big and we're gonna go with a smaller one. I've had really good luck with lithium. Um, both of those bikes and my Triumph have lithium ion batteries in them. Triumph is an anti-gravity. Both of those are um, 
Shorai, I think is how you say it. Uh, and they just put out more power. They seem to hold charges longer. Um, so we'll probably just go that route. Well, that's what I'm gonna call it on this one, guys. I hope you enjoy the first official video of working on a bike in the new shop. Um, let me know what you guys think about the new shocks, about um, your ideas on where I can kind of hide a battery, what you think would look good. Um, if you're familiar with this voltage regulator and you want to get back to me before the guys at Coil Spec do about whether or not we're going to have any issues with it running with lithium ion, uh, feel free to reach out and let me know. Um, I would expect to see a, another video on this bike very, very soon. We are out here trying to get this thing knocked out so we can start to uh, <laughs> kind of get uh, the next project going because we obviously have a lot of bikes to get through. Uh, the new shop is working out great so far. Only change I really want to make uh, is just adding more lights on this side. It's very dark and kind of uh, shadowy, we'll call it, over here with, um, you know, when you're trying to drill something or cut metal, whatever. You don't want to be in the dark. Um, so I do have those three shop lights that I was planning on putting over here. I will probably do that and then order, you know, three or four more to go on this side. And we'll just light the whole damn thing up. Um, so yeah, again, let me know what you guys think so far. I uh, appreciate you guys hanging out with me in the shop. Uh, you are going to see a lot more of me uh, in the very near future. I'm not quite ready to make my announcement just yet. I want to finalize just the last few things. Um, but a little hint is you're going to see a lot more of me. So I hope you guys are okay with that. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.